What's good people, it's Jay Cactus here and in this video we're going to be making a soulful trap beat. I grew up inspired by DJs like Ninth Wonder, Jay Dilla, um, Primo as well. So I wanted to incorporate that nice soulful sample style but then add a few trap drums on there as well and the beat came out mad so I'm going to break it down for you. Alright so the first thing I do whenever I'm sampling a track is I bring the sample into Edison and then just find the parts that I like. I didn't want to play the original sample because YouTube picks up on things like that and I didn't want any strikes on the account. So I've already been through the sample and chosen some loops that I wanted to use. So you'd highlight the section that you want to loop, make sure it's looping perfectly. I always just test it by putting a loop on here and playing it. And just make sure there's no clicking or popping. If there is clicking or popping, then it means you just haven't looped the right section. So you might want to zoom in real close and find a section as close to the line as possible. You want the point where the two dots are matching. I think it's called a node. And that will help with the clicks and pops. So once you've got the loop that you want, you use this tool to drag it in. So then from here, you can play around with the pitch and find something that you like. So for mine, I think I dragged it up 400, which is basically four semitones. <laughs> Yo, that was just a random highlighted section from Edison and already that sounds sick. So then once you've got the loop that you want to use, I put it into the tempo that I want to use as well and for this track I chose 74. Perfect 4 bar, you can just drag it with stretch and then I go in there, change the pitch and then bring it back up to 400. It just messes with the pitch once you start stretching it so that's why I do that. And then send the loop to a mixer track and then I render it. And to render it, it's just Alt R. Uh, I cut the remainder, have it on song selection, and that basically just renders it to WAV. So now I've got this. And that's in the pitch that we've chosen. And I do that because I'm now gonna drag it into Fruity Slicer. And if we didn't render it, and then you dragged it into Fruity Slicer, it would change the pitch and it would drag in the original one and not the one you've edited in the playlist. So then to add this to Fruity Slicer, we're just going to go in the channel rack, add an instance of Fruity Slicer, and then we're going to drag the sample in. In Fruity Slicer, I'm going to go here, and then click by beat. And then in here, you can play around and just find a nice chop that you like. So. So I'm just going to record that in. And then from here you can press Ctrl and Q to quantize. Bring them all to the same velocity if you want. So then once you've got a few different patterns that you want to use, I always pick a few different ones. So maybe some for the verses, one for the intro, one for the outro, another for the chorus. Variations key with these just to keep it interesting. So from here, I'd send the fruit slicer to a mixer track and then again, I render that. Just so we've got it in waveform and it's easier to manipulate then or place effects on. So once I chopped up the sample, I applied just a couple of effects just to get it sounding a bit more full and to save some room for the bass. So the first thing I added was a bit of reverb, EQ to cut some of the lows and then an imager just to widen the sound a little so it didn't sound as thin and then I came up with this. Sounding nice already. So then the drums that I selected were a bit of a mix between boom bap drums and trap drums. So the snare pattern that I went for was just something simple. You 
can quantize it if you want, but when I'm making boom bap kind of beats, then I keep it off the grid a little bit, just so it sounds a bit more natural. So once I had the snare, I added a hi-hat, but I went for a bit more of a, a trap sounding hi-hat pattern. I came up with this. And then the next thing I added was an 808. So the 808 was pretty simple, nothing too distorted. I did add some distortion to it, which I'll show you in a minute. But the first thing you want to do is make sure it's in the right key. So I'm going to go to edit in audio editor, detect pitch regions. And then that D2 is probably the little kick at the front, but then C2 is the actual bass. So it's already in C, which is fine. So now when I'm recording this pattern, the first thing I do is put it in a higher octave just to make sure it's in the right key or the right note. <laughs> And then I'm going to quantize them. I'm going to keep them the same velocity. Bring it down a few octaves. So then for the kick, I wanted a simple kick just to add a bit of high end to the 808. So I went for classic Zaytoven kick. There's not much to it, but it just adds more to the 808. So I'm just going to copy the 808 pattern, place it in the kicks. Alt K to put it down to C5. And now we've got this. And then the only other drums that I wanted to use were two open hi-hats. So we've got one here and another here, but they're going to play at different times. So this one's going to play just before the snare. Then we can quantize that all the same velocity and then the second open hi-hat is going to be like this just adds a little bit more bounce I didn't want to add too much to the drums because the sample already had drums in it and I tried EQing out everything and it was a little bit hard to take out everything so I'd kind of just masked it more than removing their drums and adding more. So then once I had the drums that I wanted to use, I came back to the playlist and just split everything by channel and then I could drag it all in and then copy and paste this across. So then I also wanted to make some parts of the sample sound a bit fuller. So a nice technique that you can use is to create a duplicate of the sample, make it unique, and then bring this one a full octave down. So a full octave is basically 12 semitones or 1200 cents. So you do that in the pitch and then the volume can be brought down as well. So then together it sounds like this. It just adds a nice sub layer. And then I'm going to do the same for this section and I'm going to make sure it's the same volume as this. So I'm going to copy the value of the volume and then paste it in here. So because I used a different part of the sample at the end of every 8 bar, I needed to change the pitch of the 808 as well. So 
There's only one note that I needed to change, so it'll sound like this. And then higher. And then just to make it a bit more interesting, I added a bit of a snare roll in here. So you can see that I added four snares, but then I let the velocity just gradually come up. So together that sounds like this. And that just creates more energy. And then I did the same before the chorus. And then for the chorus, I didn't want any drums in there until the 808 at the end. So that sounds like this. I just decided to use the same part as the intro because it just fit nicely in between everything. And again, because the sample is different, I had to change the picture of these 808 beats. Usually I mix all the instruments before I arrange everything, but this beat was quite simple, so I thought it would be easier just to arrange it first and then go into the mixing stage. So the first thing I did in the mix was organize the sample because we duplicated this bit here and this part and brought it an octave down. So I assigned them a separate mixer track. So I've got the low one on track one and then the high one on track two because I wanted to control the volume a bit more of the low one. And then I added an EQ just to cut out quite a lot of the highs and then some of the lows. And then in the high section, did apply some EQs, but I decided to just do it to the groove EQ instead. So first I applied some reverb just to add some more space. And then an EQ to take out some of the lows. And then I showed you the image earlier where I widened the sound a little. I pulled up the low mids, the high mids, and the highs, and then just tighten the lows a little bit just to control the sound a bit more. And then for the snare, some reverb to add some space. An EQ to take out some of the lows and boost some of the highs. And then for the kick, all I did was sidechain that to the 808, which I've shown in pretty much all of my videos, so I won't go through it today. Nothing in the hi-hats, all the open hi-hats apart from a bit of reverb. One of the ones that I used already had some reverb on it, so I didn't bother adding it twice. And then just some reverb to my tag at the beginning. And then the only thing I added to the master channel was a stealth limiter. It's a bit similar to the soft clipper. It's just not as harsh as a brick wall limiter. Input the gain a bit and then set the out ceiling to 0.1. And I only got a couple of dB reduction, which is perfect. And then that's the beat finished. I hope you're feeling it. And if you did, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm dropping new content regularly. This might be one of my favorite beats I've ever made because I just love that old school soulful boom bap style. But then mixing it with trap drums just gave it a different vibe. So I think someone like Jay-Z would kill this beat. But yeah, stay tuned for another video next week. Peace.